Okay, so why should you start with a UX design system? I think I was kind of already on a soapbox on that in that previous uh, video, but I'll go ahead and repeat some of this because it's very important. <laughs> I see a lot of students starting from scratch. So um, an example of a design system, if you need a refresher, um, a design system is essentially um, a set of predefined components that you can use to base your design off of. Um, so these are typically like, you know, highly reused elements of so things like form fields, buttons, calendar picker, um, things like that. They've all been predefined by major software publishers. So like Apple has um, a, a design system for iOS. Um, Google has the Android material design system. Um, and there's, there's a few other ones based on whether or not they're uh, external to the world, um, like uh, like Google and Apple, or if they're internal to a company, like IBM would have their own, Microsoft would have their own, AWS, et cetera. So that's a quick overview. So some of the benefits uh, um, of using a UX system is that, you know, when you take a design system that has been created by a software publisher, so like Apple, Android, Windows, common platforms that you'll be launching apps on, um, you should be inheriting all of their component updates and accessibility features and any other work like security work that they may be doing. Um, when you create something from scratch, like completely from scratch, that's detached from the like original design system code base, you then have um, you have this other this new layer of maintenance. So whenever the design system make some update, then you have to make that update manually on your end. Um, and that creates a lot of work, you know, the more complicated your app gets. Now you may be saying, well, Amara, we're not publishing the apps in this class. It's all like, uh, it's all conceptual. Uh, yes, I recognize that. And I would like you to have experience using um, those pre-existing components so that you know, in the likely scenario where, you know, when you're working as a UX designer, you are building products for a company. If you're building a native app, meaning an app that's going to be downloaded from the platform's app store, um, like we'll take, for example, um, Gmail being downloaded from, uh, from the Apple app store. Like there are certain like native functionality, native look and feel that will be inherited from iOS. Similarly, you know, if you download uh, Gmail from the Google Play Store, there's going to be some like inherent like UI elements that are specific um, to rendering on an Android phone. And, you know, because you're using those uh, those components and you've customized them just enough for your use case, um, you'll still inherit all of those like all the other work that goes into it. Um, so it should cut down on the work level for you. And it's good practice to, to use these existing design systems because these are practices that you'll end up seeing once you're in the industry. So creating things from scratch, um, you know, has, there's a cost benefit that goes with it. Um, if you're, you know, if, if you've joined a startup or a tech company that's like pioneering a new way of doing things and like has a whole different design system that you need to build from scratch, then then that's great. Um, you may actually still use uh, like iOS and uh, Google material and like other design systems to help inform what yours looks like. Um, but at least you will have practiced, you know, within like the rules of what other app publishers or what other software publishers have, um, have created as requirements, you know, to launch. Uh, so you, in using the pre-existing design systems, like I mentioned, you are also then inherently mostly compliant with their guidelines. So when you use things as is, uh, when you're pulling from those libraries, um, typically they will uh, those uh, those components will inherit um, properties. So things like text size, padding. Um, what the interaction looks like when you hover over something, when you click on something, that type of stuff. There, there are certain like rules and guidelines uh, when you publish something in the App Store or in the Google Play Store. And for you to get published, sometimes you, you know, 
most likely, if you're, unless you're a very big brand who's got a little bit of sway, most of the time you have to adhere to those guidelines. And if you follow their design system, chances are you will be following those guidelines. Um, you may apply them incorrectly and maybe like you'll have to make some changes, but it won't necessarily be like a whole redesign or a whole like an overhaul of your design work. So those are some of the benefits of working and working with a design system or at least using one. Using a design system also, again, kind of like reduces the workload. So I mentioned um, that all the components, most of the components are predefined. Um, again, like these aren't design systems aren't created by like just one person at the company. Typically, like it's a, it's a design team that has been working on this on on this design system for a while and they've like collated all of the use cases and all the different components that are required to enable um you know their product design so because they're predefined you're inheriting a lot of domain knowledge that you might not have access to um, but because you're freed from the you know encumbrance of having to to like spend spend the minutia of your of your hours focusing on how a radio button looks or you know how to style the text or um, what padding around um, a form looks like you can instead drag and drop all these elements and focus your time on designing the concept um, instead of having to recreate the components from scratch so again i'm just going to say it again use use the design system use it um, Something that uh, students don't quite grasp until after the class is over, uh, but I try to communicate it during class, is that um, you know design is you know, so it's helpful to understand like foundationally how design systems are built um, and actually going through the process of doing it yourself. However, design as a di as a discipline has really matured um, over the last like twenty years or so. And a lot of our work as UX designers are focused on defining functionality, defining features, um, and like really pushing those limits. When it comes to look and feel, it's not that it's not important. It's that some of those decisions have been made without you. They've been made with lots of authority and education behind them. So what, well, when you use a design system, it frees up your time to not only just focus on the feature designs and the concept design, um, but when you need to make customizations or when you need to deviate from that style kit um, or the design library, you have very good reason to do it. Um, so instead of having to do it, you know, doing it because you need to, because uh, it would help you design a better product um, that helps keep the quality of the product know at a high bar um, again like all for using design systems because it saves you so much time so wherever possible don't design things from scratch um, it frees up your time your brain power to design you know to give specific like parts of your design the time it needs to really develop and to grow um, and when you're not focused on button padding <laughs> or like the right hex code for a button. And um, you could really be designing some amazing products and amazing features.